Welcome back to the W211 Buyer's Guide. In this segment, we'll be talking W211 maintenance. So we know most of you would like to know what it's like to live with and maintain a W211. So today we'll be talking engine, drivetrains, filters, and some other things, just to give you a really thorough understanding of what it takes to live with and maintain a W211. So regardless of the platform, definitely recommend a strict regimen of frequent oil changes. That 13,000 mile Mercedes interval is just simply too long for the engine oil to provide adequate protection. So what's a good interval? 7,000 miles uh, with a good 0W40 or 540 like the liquid molly that we have here, and an OE filter from MAN or Hanks, depending on the application is going to be the way to go. As a general rule of thumb, six cylinder cars are going to require eight liters of oil, Eight cylinder cars will require nine. If we're talking the M156 platform, you definitely don't want to use a viscosity that's lower than about 540. Keep in mind that Mercedes essentially expect a racing engine for these applications. So what will it cost you to change the oil on your Mercedes? Approximately $85. So moving away from oil and into drive belts, if we're talking facelift models, they're going to require drive belt service much more frequently than pre-facelift models. The reason why is this upper uh, pulley, this grooved pulley. So this pulley fails frequently and I'd recommend maybe every two years to replace it. A couple of ways that you can determine if your idler pulley is failing. They make the most noise when it's really cold outside. So a cold start, if you're noticing a screeching noise, it's likely this idler pulley. Additionally, after it rains uh, or in a super humid environment for some reason, you tend to hear that as well and that's because as the grease leaves the bearing, it's just a metal on metal at that point, and that causes that screeching noise that you hear. But at the first sign of noise, you definitely want to replace it, because what will happen is when the bearings fail, it starts to heat up, and the plastic cracks and it shares, and it shreds the belt, uh, which takes out the entire system. So if you're inspecting the system and you have any reason at all to change the pulley, also consider changing the belt at the same time. What typically happens is when this starts to fail, the belt starts to fray as well. But even if you're not noticing the belt fraying, if you're replacing the pulley, definitely replace your belt as well. If we're talking pre-facelift cars, they don't have the propensity to fail as often. You might even get between five and seven years out of a belt. But you still wanna be checking it at every oil change. What's it gonna to cost to replace your drive belts? About $150. Spark plugs, even if you're using the OE plug, be sure to change it every 60,000 miles. What's it gonna to cost to replace spark plugs? About 85. Moving on to transmissions, the Mercedes 7226 and 7229 transmissions, which were your five speed and seven speed units, they require about an oil change every 40,000 miles or so. Similar to the engines, use the correct specification, and that specification is 236.14. Pair that with an OE filter. We offer the OE filters from Filtran for both applications. This is the uh, filter for the five speed. This is the filter for the seven speed. Now five speed transmissions could also benefit from changing the conductor plate, maybe every third oil change interval. Reason being when the conductor plates fail, they cause huge drivability issues and they're really simple to replace. Seven speed boxes, consider dropping the valve body, cleaning the screens for the solenoid, cleaning the magnet for the manual valve. That'll help you get the most life out of the seven speed box. And similar to the five speed, you wanna do that every third oil change. What's it gonna to take to service your transmission in terms of cost? Approximately $110. Moving into other fluids, we'll call them miscellaneous fluids. You have your power steering, your transfer case, your differential, uh, and your brake fluid. You wanna be replacing those fluids every two years. If we're talking power steering fluid, also replace the power steering reservoir at the same time. These are not just reservoirs, they also contain the filter or the fluid screen for the system. When that screen gets clogged, you're gonna get groaning and whining. Uh, in the case of the 156, you might go through a power steering pump, you might notice the power steering fluid getting really aerated. So if you're seeing any of that, replace both the power steering fluid and the filter. But as a general rule, every two years. 
If we're talking about power steering, if it's an AMG model, it might cost uh, about 70. If it's a non-AMG model, about $55. When it comes to the differential and transfer case, same deal. Both of them don't take much fluid. The fluid capacity is about a bottle for each. And we just recommend that if you have an AMG performance model, you're using the correct viscosity, which is 75140. Uh, we offer it in the dealer fluid or the liquid molly, both great options. And if you have a standard open differential, make sure you're using the correct viscosity as well. So what is it going to cost to service all of those systems? It's really inexpensive. If we're talking transfer case or differential, it's about $25 for fluid. Now for brake systems, if you have a pre-facelift model, 03 to 06 model years, those cars had the SBC system, the Centr Sensitronic brake system and they require specialized diagnostic equipment in order to service. So in that case, if you don't have that specialized diagnostic equipment, I'd certainly recommend using an independent shop or a dealer to service those vehicles. What's it gonna to cost to replace brake fluid? About $55 as well. Lastly, I wanna talk filters. You should be replacing your filters every year. So if we're talking the engine filter, uh, it comes as a filter set. So you're gonna have two filters regardless of the platform. And if we're talking cabin filters, that's the filtration for the air you breathe in the cabin. Some models have a, a single filter that's in the engine room. I'd recommend replacing that at the same time that you replace the engine air filter, which is about every year. Uh, Pre-facelift models also have two additional charcoal filters right next to the blower case. Consider replacing all of those at the same time. Well, now that we've talked about the various systems on the W211 and how to maintain them, I hope you have a much better understanding of what it takes to maintain these vehicles. As you can tell, they really don't require much. If you want to learn more about some of the other systems that we did not feature in this video, we've got a ton of other W211 uh, buyer's guide videos that contain more information about that. If you have questions, be sure to comment below. Also, if you like what you've seen today, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.